as you may or may not know, Genentech and Dell have been joining forces to offer you a full month of free webinars. So we'll have product and vertical experts from both companies providing insights on the current state of the market and deep dive into technical trends. So today, um, our webinar is on building a secure and connected bank. Before we get into uh, who the presenters are and introducing ourselves, if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to use the chat box in the question box, and we'll get to as many questions as we can at the end. If we're not able to, we'll email you directly. So my name is Carrie Ann Beach. I'm the industry marketing manager here at Genetech for retail and banking. And I'm here with my co-presenter, Jim Mills from Dell. Jim, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Jim Mills. I'm with Dell's uh, Safety and Security and Computer Vision business unit uh, that supports our partners like Genetech and uh, our Dell teams. Perfect. So today we'll be diving into the banking trends and challenges that are facing the industry. And we're going to specifically look at two trends, which is uh, navigating a changing threat landscape and being able to adapt to change. So if you joined uh, and you are interested in learning a bit about managing occupancy, as a lot of people are, we will cover that as well. So let's dive in. So if you are a bank or a financial institution, or maybe you're an integrator that works with banks, or maybe you've simply been to a bank, I'm sure you're aware that this industry has been plagued by silos. It's really entrenched in their mentality. It's in their muscle, it, or theirs or your muscle memory from the people to the departments. And it even goes down to the legacy systems that they're using. Uh, many banks are actually still using the same proprietary system that were put into place decades ago to meet the individual needs of distinct teams. This likely sounds familiar to a lot of you. But currently, there's a really big changes that we're seeing in the environment, and there's new trends that are disrupting this siloed uh, way of thinking. So, of course, a big one is a complex threat landscape, and this is marked by increasing cyber attacks. No surprise here, I'm sure you're all really living with this, but what is really interesting is that from February to April of this year that just passed, cyber attacks on financial institutions have grown 238%, and this is since branches and corporate offices have been closed and people have been working from home. So clearly hackers are not taking a break um, given this pandemic. Another thing that we're seeing is demanding customer needs. And this is due to what is called the branch transformation. So for those of you that don't know what this is, it's really a fundamental shift that we've been seeing in the ways the branches um, are interacting with their customers and how customers wanna interact with the branches. It's really because online banking has caused this huge shift and people no longer have to go into their branch to do transactions. So instead, they're going there to learn about their finances. So we're seeing branches are taking on the role of being a financial educator. So in these new spaces, some of which are even taking the form of coffee shops, so they're starting to look a little bit like, you know, a coffee store or retail store, the customer experience is the utmost importance because this is going to be what return, uh, determines customer retention. So these two trends combine to make it clear that legacy systems just can't keep up. They don't allow for an overall view of your security. You can't correlate data to enhance insights because you're using all of these different applications. And they don't allow the flexibility to adapt to an unplanned challenge, say a global pandemic. So as a result, we're seeing banks begin to abandon their legacy systems in favor of more modern technology. So you might be uh, introducing new IoT devices, new tools uh, into your systems, or maybe you're not quite there yet and you're still buying purpose-built software uh, with locked-in hardware. But either way, if you're not asking the right questions as you begin to change and modernize, you could end up with this hodgepodge of standalone systems that weren't meant to work together. So let's look at this a little bit closer. This is the growing frustration that we've been seeing within this industry. So years or decades ago, you deployed a lot of standalone systems that was based on the individual needs of each team. And for the time, it worked fine. You had each team working on their own, kind of quite siloed. Uh, they're using their own appliances. They don't really need to share data. And things are going well. So maybe your real estate is changing. Maybe you're adding more branches and corporate offices globally. 
But at the same time, the threat landscape is also continuing to change and becoming more complex. And it's exposing the flaws that's inherent with this siloed mentality and siloed systems. So because of this, you see an opportunity and you're excited to modernize and start to invest in new tools. But if you lack a comprehensive view of your security across teams, across stakeholders, and you don't align with everyone, each team can end up investing in their own uh, you know, new tools and ap applications. And then you're right where you were before, but maybe in the cloud. So you still have this hodgepodge scenario that I described earlier. And this brings up the concept of integration versus unification. Now you might have be familiar with these terms. In an integrated system, you likely start with your video, because this is really um, the most important thing that we're looking at for banks, and then you can expand from there. But the video serves as your base. So you have your video platform, it has its own server, you add different camera hardwares onto your network, and you also have your video client that allows you to uh, take this data and interact with it. Then you decide you also want to add access control. Okay, so now there's another access control platform, another server, more hardware, readers and controllers. And in a lot of cases, you're probably locked into proprietary hardware, so you can't take advantage of the latest and greatest. And you also have that additional access control client. So your operators now have more than one client to bounce between to do their job. And then maybe you also decide that you want to add in some intercom uh, platform. So you have your yet another server, server yet more hardware, yet another client. Uh, and this is just the beginning. Uh, for banks, you can also have, maybe you want to look at your ATM transactions. You want to be able to tag that with video. You want to introduce your exception-based reporting client. You could see how it really adds up very quickly. So the problem here is even if you had maybe a PSIM where to the outside, it looks like you have everything seamless on one interface. In the background, everything is still very fragmented and nothing was designed to build uh, to work together. There's also a lot of hidden costs that are associated on the back end here, especially one about um, uh, maintenance and upgrades. So if you want to upgrade one appliance or integration, it could break compatibility with another one. And because you're working with multiple different vendors for each of these applications, uh, you might not know where the problem even started. So there's a lot of time that's wasted there. And not to mention, you also have ongoing training for each one of these applications instead of just one. So as you evaluate new technology, we really want you to consider the most important question, and that's the foundation of your system and its ability to grow with you. So let's take a look at the trends I just mentioned before and how a unified platform can help address these challenges. So for one, it can help you build a strong physical and cyber secure strategy because each piece was really designed to work together from the ground up, uh, from the software down to the hardware. It can also help you address demanding customer needs with the flexibility to add in new tools as you need them and to be able to pivot your security strategy to respond to unplanned challenges. So this is really a story about scale, the ability to add in these new tools and adjust your strategy to evolve with changing landscapes. And that's not just for you know, huge disruptions like we're seeing with the pandemic, it's also just if, as you ebb and change and flow and grow or, or wanna go smaller, like you need the ability to be agile and to be flexible. Ultimately, a unified platform can help you achieve a connected bank where each piece flows together and shows you the bigger picture across your organization. So operators don't need to spend time jumping between applications. IT doesn't need to waste time uh, maintaining and upgrading their systems. So for the rest of this presentation, we're gonna dive into each three of these pillars, starting with the changing threat landscape. So as we mentioned, banks are increasingly targeted by cyber attacks. And there's actually been 3,494 successful cyber attacks this year. And this was before the start of the pandemic where we said we've noticed a very large increase. So banks are adapting by abandoning their legacy systems in favor of more modern technology. 
but introducing these new applications can actually make your system more vulnerable to hackers. So what do we mean by that? We live in an increasingly interconnected world. And what that means is that a poorly secured camera or an unencrypted communication can serve as an entry point for a hacker to completely wreak havoc onto your system. We've seen that banks can have as many as 1,000 applications within an enterprise, and each application can then have hundreds or thousands of IoT devices connected to them. So this leaves thousands of endpoints that can be compromised and potentially a million or more vulnerabilities. Let's let that sit for a second. Sounds very scary, and this is not to fully just scare you. It's not to say that any add-ons or applications are bad, but the point to make here is that it's extremely important to consider the security of each IoT device and each tool or application that you're adding onto your system. Because a single weak spot is all it takes, our unified solution was designed with connectivity and security in mind from the ground up, and each layer has its own protection. So before we dive into some of the tools that we can offer you to create a strong security strategy, I'm gonna pass it over to Jim to discuss how infrastructure requirements are changing uh, and how that relates to cybersecurity. Thank you, Carrie Ann. Uh, as we noticed, the cameras, the number of cameras being put on the network, the number of devices that get put on the network, uh, it's important to consider that each one of those devices are an inlet to a possible security vulnerability. So the security world isn't the same as it was 10 to 20 years ago uh, when we had analogs on an isolated uh, coaxial type network. Uh, that's why they called it closed circuit TV. It was a closed circuit. Now with uh, IP cameras, data devices, cybersecurity is important and customers will increasingly list it as a top priority because any camera, any device connected to the network is a pathway to other devices. Uh, there are so many ways that this could be done. So how do you do how do you do it? How do you know what's the right one? What's the right solution for each project? Well, with Genetech and with Dell, we have the Streamroll appliances, which all come with the same image, which provides you continuity and consistency across your devices. Uh, data centers are full, and IT is looking to reduce the infrastructure footprint uh, as much as possible. So more cameras, better throughput, more storage per rack, all of those have to be considered, and how do we shrink that footprint? How do we make it more unified? Uh, on a single stream vault, you can run the video, the access control, license plate recognition, or other types of analytics. But protecting your uh, data, um, you have to look at, like I said, everything. Um, everything has to be properly integrated with your structure, and your structure has to be uh, put together so that it is uh, designed from the ground up. And with what Dell does in its chip technology, in its devices and hardware, along with the security uh, solutions that are built into the Genetech software, you're able to design a system uh, that is uh, very good from the beginning of the supply chain to the implementation of the software. Uh, you have to consider user identity, access management, um, mobile device management, uh, network micro-segmentation, uh, application defense or device defense, but you need to protect that data across the life cycle uh, with everything on that infrastructure. And you can ensure business continuity in the event of a ransomware attack with an isolated recover, recovery environment separated from the network for maximum security. So how do you do that? It's important to really look at it and look how you're going to integrate with your existing uh, infrastructure. When you build your environment with secure, modern infrastructure, cyber resilience, uh, you have a much better process, more secure process, and a much simpler process. One thing that you have to look at is, in environment, do you have a trusted team or partnership that can provide validated solutions? Uh, because what you want to be able to install either from a software application, either from a camera technology or an infrastructure uh, switch, uh, route, uh, servers, storage, whatever it may be, Dell EMC and Genetech are there to provide either a software-defined infrastructure for flexibility 
or enterprise grade industry leading scale out compute and storage uh, that reduces your liability and compliance challenges. That's what we've got to look at. At the same time, we're able to reduce the physical footprint of the system because we're able to take advantage of software defined and the enterprise capability of the Genetech software and the Dell hardware. Genetech has a full portfolio to meet all of these requirements. Um, if you look at their various types of uh, all-in-one devices, uh, the analytics, the workstations, the archivers, all of this is part of a portfolio, a set of solutions that will provide you a one-stop shop to go to for your software and your hardware and your security to provide resiliency and or redundancy. So their stream vaults are basically uh, all-in-one devices with uh, a unification bundle, remote site monitoring and recording, uh, optional RAID 5 for critical video storage, uh, could be RAID 10, RAID 1, a number of different RAID configurations. But you can also migrate from your existing analog systems to a digital or IP uh, network, which might include video management on the IP side, access control on the IP side, automated license plate recognition or communications which are IP based. All of this can be done in a stream vault appliance uh, because it's all unified and will provide uh, that uh, one stop solution. Uh, the portfolio uh, stream vault has a couple different versions. You can see here on the screen the 100 and uh, 300 series or units that uh, include base licenses and then you can expand to the uh, server based which are going to be designed to meet your particular needs. Is it RAID 1? Is it RAID 5? Is it RAID 10? Is it external uh, storage because you need to keep storage for 30 days or six months or a year? Whatever it may be, as you go up in the device you have more compute capability and more storage capability. In addition to these boxes, outside if we need to create a high density server environment with a Genetech solution, we can create a virtualized uh, platform that provides high density storage either on the compute or in what we call a tier one or tier two, which is external to the compute. So however your infrastructure is today, the system will be able to provide a scalable and uh, growth path uh, to provide the best security and the best uh, integration of your video resources. Multiple VMS recorders, archivers, master database can all be put on a combination of maybe four servers in a node architecture that will allow you to consolidate 10 or 12 or 15 bare metal devices into a virtualized environment to decrease that footprint. One solution if you want to do that. So to, in order to talk about the tools and the partners, other partnership relation activities that we have, I'm going to pass it back to Carrie Ann. Thanks, Jim. So in the end, uh, as Jim was mentioning, you need to choose solutions you can rely on from vendors you can trust. And we deploy a defense in depth approach, and it's one that we adopt in our product offering and we encourage within the industry. So as you can see here, there's really a lot of layers um, to add more protection to your system. It's quite complex and I won't go into all of them, but I'm gonna discuss a few key points, especially as they relate to our partnership with Dell. So one such layer is deploying a fully hardened system. Now we've estimated that it can take up to 11 hours to fully harden a system, and this is per appliance. But if you use a pre-hardened uh, appliance like StreamVault, you actually cut this time down and then you could focus on value added tasks like operator training and implementation of best practices. So out of the box, you have layers of protection like ensuring passwords aren't default, end-to-end -end encryption, et cetera, and you can enforce best practices. We also have a hardening tool exclusively made for StreamVault appliances that will keep the units protected against the latest threats. 
Next, when it comes to protecting the security systems and protecting the data exchange and stored within these systems, there are three main categories we need to look at, and I'm going to go over them uh, at a high level. So this is authentication, authorization, and encryption. So the first step is authentication. You might have heard this term. It determines whether an entity is who they claim to be before they can access the system. So for an individual, this is usually going to be based on a username and password combination. And this is why it's extremely important that you change your default like admin one passwords to a stronger password and update them periodically for all of your devices. So once we validated that, let's say Jim is who he says he is, we need to consider what can he see and what can he do within the system. So this is the authorization piece and it allows you to have control over who sees what and what they can do and interact with once they've authenticated to the system. So we may not want Jim to have access to everything, only what's absolutely necessary to do his job. So what he's able to see or do is gonna depend on a set of privileges assigned to him by the administrators. And you can really deep dive into what each operator can or can't do. And then finally, the third category is encryption. So encryption is the process of transforming information to make it unreadable for unauthorized users. And this piece is extremely important uh, as it ensures privacy and protection of your data and secures intellectual property. So as we discussed, banks can have thousands of applications and even more connected IoT devices. So that's why it's really important that you make sure everything is encrypted and protected. Each layer that you put in is highly considered. It's like putting a lock on a door. So you don't have access who can go to that door just because you put the lock there. And that's why it's important to pair it with authentication. So because we've authenticated them, we've essentially given the right key to the right person. So at Genetech, we encrypt video in transit, meaning while the data is traveling from say a camera to a server and at rest when it sits in the server. So we're gonna look at this from an architectural perspective. So let's say myself, Carrie Ann, I want to have access to security desk. So I'm gonna be asked to prove that I am who I say I am. So I'll enter my username and my password. The client's gonna take that info and send it to the server via claims-based authentication and secure token service. Uh, and then it's gonna validate, okay, yes, there is an account there for me, so it'll open up the client session in my workstation. So I've authenticated that I am who I say I am, and there's also secure communication from me to the client, from the client to the server, and the server to the database. Now, based on my permissions, I'm gonna be authorized to see and do certain things within the system. I likely won't have access to every database and every uh, entry that's in there, just what I need to do my job. There's also a connection from the server all the way down to the camera and the hardware pieces that are connecting to your system. So maybe I am in a GSOC and I wanna see some video at a branch level. Just like I need to authenticate myself into the system, so too do the cameras. So you have your camera username and password, and then the video is gonna be encrypted in transit from the camera to the server, as well as at rest. And all these uh, also apply to access control components as well. Of course, this is a simplified version, but what's important to remember is that there is authentication between any device that's connected to Security Center and every point of communication is encrypted. Now, we understand that this is complicated and you need a way to be able to track how you're doing so that you know where you have to improve. You can track potential risks and then be able to close them. So this is why we offer a cybersecurity dashboard where you can see all the best practices and ensure your guidelines are being met. So the goal here is to remove the complexity and really democratize cybersecurity because we believe that it's everyone's job, everyone's job. So we have a security score widget for dashboards that tracks your system's compliance to the guidelines and security center hardening guide. It's gonna adapt a checklist to your system's components so that you could see a personalized score. So very quickly, you're able to see what needs to be done that can augment your store and your resilience. So maybe you have some cameras that are still using default passwords. Maybe you're lacking end-to-end -end encryption. 
you can decide what's important to you that makes up this score. We also have a health monitoring dashboard where you can monitor the health of all your devices. So a lot of banks come to us and they say that they have no way of knowing if their video is up or down, if their access control is healthy or not. And this makes sense because they have so many connected devices across all of the branch and corporate locations. So this dashboard gives you a global view across your branches and your corporate offices. So before someone even has to call you from the branch to tell you a camera is down, you already know just by looking at the dashboard. It also helps for knowing just the availability of the system. So how long have the cameras been up for, especially if you want it to remain in say the 98th percentile range. So now that we've looked at the threat landscape, we're gonna move into how a unified platform can help give you the flexibility to adapt to unplanned ch challenges. So we're gonna shift our attention for the moment towards the current pandemic. Now, you're likely in a situation where your branches and your corporate offices are starting to reopen, and you're gonna to need to adjust your security strategy to adhere to the local guidelines for occupancy density. So in order to have this flexibility at all, you first need a platform that's gonna be able to support a scalable way to manage occupancy and also allow for you to mobilize your operations to conform with these regulations. That's why we introduced our occupancy management package from Security Center. Um, this allows current Security Center users to simply add on a few part numbers to their existing system, and this will unlock the ability to manage occupancy. This is also going to save you time and money because you won't have to have a guard stationed in the front and the back trying to track the occupancy and it also removes the human error. So we have three main pillars to this package and that's the ability to count people to visualize data and to manage occupancy by responding to alerts. So in the first pillar, people counting, we have a few options. You can deploy a server-based analytic that leverages deep learning for people counter. Uh, there's also some edge cameras that support people counting. And depending on the application and the accuracy that you need, you can also leverage LIDAR, a time of flight type of technology for people counting. Uh, this is used best when you need an accuracy of 98% plus. Of course, it'll be different price points, so it really depends on the accuracy that you're looking for and the price point that you're looking for. Uh, just a note, all of this is very customizable. If you'll be interested in this, you can work with channels, they'll get you set up. And now our second pillar is visualization. So. Step one, you capture the data of data of people counting, but now you need to have tools that'll help you visualize and make sense of this data. So you can create a dashboard as you see here. Uh, what's important too is this widget. So it shows you how many people are currently in your premises out of the amount that you want, and you can set this yourself. It's dynamic, it'll change as people come and go. And you can also uh, show demonstrate uh, compliance with these occupancy audit reports. And then finally, our third pillar is reacting to alerts. So our system can deliver alerts and generate events to action when thresholds are being reached. Uh, and this could be in the form of an email, a sound, or an alarm. Uh, maybe you want to display it on a video wall. I'm going to show you a quick um, demo of what the dashboard looks like. So here you see your video, your top-down camera. You have your widget that's uh, changing. Uh, you could set the threshold to just, uh, I, want it to, I want to be notified when it's at 11 people because that's close to my maximum threshold of 15, or you could only be alerted when it's at 15. You also have the reports here at the side, and you have your map and people counting graphs. Another important tool to facilitate work during these challenging times is clearance, which is our evidence management system. So using clearance, you can easily gather data across branches without physically needing to go to those branches, find the right cameras, take out the video, and then you can also share it with law enforcement again without needing that physical handshake. And with that, I'm going to pass it back to Jim to tell us a little bit about the use of unified analytics and how it can help enhance the experience of the branches. 
Thank you, Carrie Ann. And again, as we look at implementing a true video management system that has a number of different solutions that create a unified approach, don't forget about analytics. Uh, the unified analytic platform that is utilized by Genetech are standard analytics that can be added or removed depending on your needs. They're all part of the unified analytics package, but you may, like we said, counting might be one of them. You may need more, but the process of analytics allows you to add automation to your video management system. You can't sit and have somebody, a lot of times, sitting and watching the video screen. So through analytics, you can automate processes that will allow you to notify you in the event something meets a specific uh, condition. Uh, this will greatly simplify deployment, uh, maintenance, after sales support, minimizing operational and training costs uh, because of the automation and the packages that are included in Security Center. Uh, you don't have to configure it separate in separate applications like some analytics uh, you have to have a separate server it depends uh, you know on the type of analytics there may be some additional analytics not in this list that you may need to add that may or may not be able to be added in but if it is a server then you've got to think about what processing you're using and how do you make sure it is unified with the security center everything is is possible is done through the security center and everything can be uh, operator controlled and security controlled and operate on a single platform. So video, the, how our video analytics offering stands out, number one, um, use any infrastructure. You can add the video analytics capabilities, as you see, to any existing server or deploy dedicated analytics appliances, as we mentioned, pre-installed and validated. So it really depends on what analytic you want, what stream vault you have. But the thing is, go beyond security number two. Do more than strengthen your physical security. You use the video analytics to provide automation. Uh, you are future-proofing uh, your system because now some of that data that was sitting there only to be used if you had an incident, then you would go back and review it. Analytics can automate that and provide much more operational efficiency maintenance as well as support for the business and to provide intelligence to the data. The third thing is well, freedom of choice. Again, remain future-proof, swap out any components as your needs evolve, which is important. You don't want to be stuck with an analytic that you won't use after a year or two. Maybe the operations have changed, so you need a different analytic. Access to a full ecosystem of video analytic technologies. Uh, the Stream Vault series and Genetech has access to many different analytics. Uh, Dell itself validates analytics with a lab with NVIDIA and with a lab with Intel. So there's a lot of validation and process in making sure that you have the right analytic at the right time. So there are a number of different things that can, uh, analytics that can run on the edge or it can run on servers. That's your choice. Again, freedom of choice. So again, Kerry will talk a little bit about integrating this data and how do we make it a connected bank. Thanks, Jim. So this does bring us to our concept of the connected bank. Um, we only talked about a few of the pillars here, but overall we want to make sure that you have everything that you need under one platform and that everything is based on the same database so that you can correlate data and go further. So, some of our uh, four of our pillars the first one being the unified platform starting with the foundation so we spoke about that uh, it's easy to manage and upgrade over time there's an open architecture so you can add in the latest hardware that you see fit uh, as long as they're supported uh, by security center you're not going to be locked into proprietary hardware the second of course protect your investments so the cybersecurity tools that we mentioned earlier today um, cloud is also another big pillar, of course, that we didn't get to talking to right now. We have a variation of deployment methods, whether you want to go fully uh, into the cloud or you want to go a hybrid and have some things on-prem, you can really transition at your own pace. And then the third piece, enhancing operational efficiency. And this is really what it's all about, right? Um, especially with these pandemics and, and budgets get tighter, you need to be able to work smarter with less. So one thing that we also offer is the ability to speed up investigations. 
Uh, this uses something called Transaction Finder, where we can take ATM data and tag it with video as well as exception-based reporting to define your search criteria. And you can identify suspicious behavior very quickly. Another concept is central monitoring, uh, especially if you have remote branches, you wanna be able to monitor what's going on there, uh, report and maybe give people access without having to physically go to those uh, places. And then finally, harnessing intelligence to work smarter. And this is something that's really enabled with the unified platform that you don't get if everything is, if all your databases are stuck in silos. Uh, so correlating data to derive new insights, and this helps you at the branch level. We do have a banking portfolio that's specifically designed to meet the needs of your of banks. Uh, we did a lot of research. We looked into what it is that you're looking for and what is the most useful for you and combined all of that. Uh, you can find more information on our website, but in a nutshell, uh, it includes a couple of different things that we didn't have time to touch on today. So I'll go over those. Uh, one of them is spotting and tracking intrusion, being able to tag it with video so that you can a, see if it's really an actual incident that you need to respond to so that police aren't just automatically dispatched. And also you can qualify out those false alarms, like maybe it's just someone standing on a door uh, or like leaning against a door for a door forced open. Uh, access and secure data in the cloud, of course. Our cybersecurity and health monitoring dashboards that we discussed. The ability to share evidence with um, auditors or law enforcement, as we discussed, validating ATM transactions with video, tracking vehicles in transit, and managing uh, access to restricted areas. And obviously, there's our video um, monitoring. If you do have any questions on our banking portfolio, uh, we have a lot of information online. And of course, feel free to reach out. We'd be happy to have a discussion about it. So for the takeaways of today, building a connected bank really starts with your unified strong foundation. Security and trust is obviously a key consideration to mitigate risk and just thinking about how each layer that you bring into your environment is protected and the importance of scale and the ability to add in your tools as you need them so that you can adapt uh, to unplanned challenges. That brings us to the end of our presentation. I'll open the floor up to questions. And if we don't get to anything or you have something later, our, our uh, email addresses are here. So let's check some questions. I have one here about ATM solutions. Um, so we talked a bit about Transaction Finder, but on top of that, we also have an SV, we have a bundle that's essentially an SV100 with two to four cameras that you can add and this fits in the ATM. And then when you combine that with Transaction Finder, you also have your exception-based reporting and the ability to tag video with your, um, with your transactions. I also see some questions about occupancy. This has been a very hot topic recently, of course, as everyone's really gearing up to go back uh, to work. So we have had a few webinars on occupancy. Uh, you could find them all online. They even had a full 20 to 30 minutes on Q&A. So I definitely encourage you to look there and I can share the link as well. Do we have anything for the Dell side? I think that one of the questions was coming back to work, not only occupancy, what other things can Genetech and Dell uh, do for getting people back to work? And I think not only occupancy, but also um, some temperature monitoring is a possibility. Uh, it is able to be integrated into the Genetech platform so that you can possibly measure temperatures automatically. Uh, but remember, the temperature checking is an auxiliary type system. Uh, in addition to collecting elevated uh, body temperature, uh, your mitigation strategies are going to be important to have also a handheld thermometer as a secondary uh, temperature monitoring so that you can verify. And then you must have policies in place. And what are your mitigation strategies if someone comes into your facility with a, an elevated body temperature? What do you do? How do you handle it? Those policies need to be in place before you even decide to implement the technology. And I, 
that was the Thank only you. question there. Uh, we also have a question about where can we browse Dell hardware from Genetech. Uh, so if you search Stream Vault uh, on our Genetech website, you'll be able to see uh, a lot of our joint solution there. There's also a question, uh, does the people counting solutions work with some existing cameras? Uh, so we are continuously adding on the people counting solutions that'll work with the occupancy management package. Right now we have Axis, uh, I believe we're adding Bosch and Kiwi. And then of course there's the LiDAR sensor as well. Uh, and as we continue to add, we'll also make that available. So it doesn't look like there's too many questions left here. Um, we're gonna stay online for a little bit if you do have any others. Uh, in the meantime, thank you so much for joining. I also realize I did not point out before that it is only my face you have been seeing. Uh, this is because Jim was having some technical difficulties. We would have, of course, loved to see his face. Um, and we hope that you enjoyed this presentation. And thank you from Dell to all of the participants. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, DellTechnologies.com uh, can provide information on Genetech validations and how Dell and Genetech work together. Thank you.